Now that we have Composer installed, we are ready to install Craft. And here are the steps that we need to follow. You can see I'm on the command line and I'm in the training directory. Now I need to decide where I'm going to install my project. And what I like to do is have a project directory for each project. So I'm going to create a directory. I'm going to do make directory, let's say crafty coffee 2020. And then I'm going to CD into that change directory 2020. Oop, got to type that right. There we go. And now I'm in there. And now there's nothing here. And this is where I want to install craft. So to install it, we use composer and we're going to use the create project command and the name of the project that we want to fetch the project repository is craft CMS slash craft. So what this is, is craft has created a a repository for us in the composer index that we can then fetch and create a project with it. And then composer behind the scenes will do everything that we need, like create the composer.json file and the composer.lock file. So it's going to pull from the craft CMS slash craft repository for composer. And we're also going to use the dot at the end space dot to tell it to install it in the current working directory. Now we'll wait while composer does its thing and installs the dependencies for craft. And then we'll take the next step to get it up and running. You can see all this stuff flying by. These are the dependencies that craft relies on in order to work all the different software that craft uses and composer manages all of this for craft. There you go. And you can say right here, a new install craft CMS generate a security key. And we're ready to go. We have craft up and running. Now our next step is to run the craft setup command. And you can see it prompts us right here to do that. So I'm just going to clear it. Okay. Let's go ahead and just do an LS in our project directory and see what we have here. You can see we have our composer.json file, a composer.lock file that locks in the versions of the dependencies. We have a config directory. I talked about that one earlier that we would need that one to have write permissions. Here's the craft executable. Here is the modules directory, storage directory. This is temporary files, templates. This is where our templates will go. The vendor directory is the one that composer creates to store all of the software. And this is recreated. So if another person on your team downloads the repository, they just have to run composer install and they'll get all of the vendor directory files and folders downloaded from composer. And then there's the web directory. And inside of here is all of the web available assets, CSS files, JavaScript files, images, all that sorts of stuff. So at this point we can set up local hosting for our site so we can start working with it. Now I like to use a tool called valet by Laravel. You might want to use MAMP or LAMP or XAMP or something else. I have a whole entire course here on CraftQuest called Local Hosting, and you can just search at the toolbar at the top of the site to find the best one for you and use that before you continue on if you don't already know how to do the local hosting. But our next step is to do the installation, and we're going to do it right from the command line. We're going to run dot slash craft setup. And this is going to run us through a setup wizard. And in this case, it's going to ask us which database driver we're using. We'll say MySQL. It's going to be localhost. Default is 3306. Anything in the square brackets is what we'll be used if you just hit enter. It'll be root and no password. And the database name will be crafty coffee 2020. And I actually need to create this. So let me go over to my database tool. And I'm just running my database server locally here. So I'll create this. There we are. And it's going to check that it can access it. Table prefix, you can use a prefix like craft underscore if you're using a shared database. In my case, I don't need it. So it tested my database credentials and it was a success. And then it saved them to the .env file and it asked me if I'm ready to install craft. I hit enter to do yes. And now I'm going to create my first user, the admin user. I like to use the name admin for the default user. And we'll do training 
at Majinko.com. And then we'll do a password and confirm it. And the name of the site is Crafty Coffee. The site URL is going to be craftycoffee.test. Language is English US, so I'll hit enter. And there we go, it's installing all the tables and default data as it flies by. And you can do the same thing via the browser as well. And now we have Craft successfully installed in 9.493 seconds. So what's changed here? If I do an ls-al to see everything, you can see there's a .env file. I can show you this. And you can see this is the environment file. This is specific only to each environment. You don't version control this. And it has like database connection information, default site URL, stuff that's specific to your environment, whether it's here locally, on a staging server, or on a database server. But let's actually talk about this .env file because there's more to it than just kind of glossing over it like I did.